couple more assembly examples since I kind of did a little bit quickly in class. Now, granted, in uh, graduate classes, we tend to do a little more emphasis on assembly because the students actually implement this a bit more. You know, you know, in programming language, uh, and I kind of gloss over quickly here. But let me just do a couple more examples. Uh, it'll help do the assignment as well or uh, help your gratification in general. So here's a real simple model. Two elements, three nodes. And uh, we showed in class how you can get this by considering sum of forces at each node. So for example, this would be the second node. And you have the tensile forces. This is the stress in element two times the cross-sectional area of element two. And this is the stress in element one times cross-sectional area of element one. And look, you have the external applied force F2 there. So you can get the three discrete finite element equations by doing sum of forces at each node. Now, this is something that's not so easy for computers to automate. So instead, we have this sort of assembly process. And I showed how that works very quickly and visually um, looking at the overlapping of the stiffness elements. But let me show you another approach that's a, maybe a little more rigorous and somewhere in between the two. And this is this notion of a augmented stiffness matrix. I wasn't going to cover this, but I noticed in the second homework I call it this. But this might help if you're still a little confused about how the scattering goes visually, maybe this will help bridge that concept a little bit. So if you look at this system, we have three degrees of freedom for the whole system, U1, 2, and 3. So know that each global stiffness matrix Oh, I'm sorry, that the global stiffness matrix is, in fact, going to be a 3 by 3. All right? And it gets multiplied by the nodal unknowns, U1, U2, and U3. Okay? And that's going to equal the external forces, F1, F2, and F3. So if you think about it, each row corresponds to a sum of forces at node 1, sum of forces at node 2, and sum of forces at node 3, whereas the columns are associated with degrees, the actual de global degrees of freedom, u1, u2, and u3, and that comes about because of the way we do a matrix vector multiplication, and you have the dot product of the row of the matrix with the column of the unknowns. So, when I do the augmented stiffness matrix, what I do is I write the stiffness matrix for each element, but in the global stiffness matrix. So if you look at it this way, like I'm going to actually write this augmented stiffness matrix, but for element one. And then I'm going to add on to it an augmented stiffness matrix for element two. U1, U2, U3. It's also going to get multiplied by the nodal unknowns. Here's the three by three. I'm going to discuss this approach a little bit. So it's called augmented because instead of you dealing with the 2 by 2 stiffness matrix, we augment it to be the same dimension as the global stiffness matrix. And again, so let's assume that there's a stiffness for the first element and a stiffness for the second element. So Ke is the area times Young's modulus over the length for that particular element. Okay? That's by definition, right? Okay, so the first element relates um, the forces at nodes 1 and 2 to the degrees of freedom at nodes 1 and 2. So it sits here. So in fact, you get the K1, K1 minus K1, minus K1, and then K1 there. And you'd have 0 everywhere else. The second element relates the forces at nodes 2 and 3 to the displacements at node 2 and 3. So this gives me a K2 minus K2 minus K2 and then a K2 there. And again, zero is everywhere else. So if you think about this, this is the KD for the first element. So what we get here 
is really the force balance for the first element. Likewise, this is the force, the internal force of the second element. These are the forces that happen inside the system because of the stretching of the element in particular. These aren't the external applied forces, so these are actually internal forces of the elements. And if you look at this, we basically sum those together, and those have to equal the external force. Okay? And in this case, that's the F1, F2, and F3. Now obviously, you can pull the displacement vectors out. Let me move this over so you can see the whole thing. You can pull the displacement vectors out, and then what we're left with is, if I call it, now if I call this big K2, what I'm left with is big K1 plus big K2, these are the augmented stiffness matrix, times the vector of the nodal unknowns has to equal the external force vector. And then if you just sum these two augmented stiffness matrices up, what you get is the the global stiffness matrix, big K, and here you can see obviously that big K has to equal, just by adding these two together, K1 minus K1, 0, minus K1, K1 plus K2, minus K2, 0, minus K2, and then K2. All right, so it's kind of what we saw in class by just visually inspecting the overlap, it's the same as we got by that approach. Or if you were explicitly to write the sum of forces on the three nodes, you'd get the same set of equations. Okay. All right. So the nice thing about this is if you do something a little different, like for.